extreme, 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 extreme giraffe tail. Super long, so that's one element of the fact that it's so extreme. But the other element is that the giraffe's face comes off of the nail, like face forward. And a giraffe has a very long face. So there's a lot of 3D elements to this. It is very over the top. It is super just crazy and realistic. I love it so, so much. The giraffe has a piece of acacia leaf that's hanging out of his mouth because he's in the middle of lunch, which I also think is just so cool. I've seen some other extreme animal designs, but I haven't seen a giraffe that's eating, so that's just another element that I love to do. One thing about this design that I do want to mention is that I got to try a new product when I was doing this because I had this bottle of 3D monomer from Koopa that has been sitting in a closet for over a year and I never got around to opening it and I just opened it and this stuff is amazing. So if you've never tried Koopa's 3D monomer, I'll talk more about it in the video, but whew, it is it is good stuff. So that made this design go way faster than I was anticipating. So if nothing else, take away from this video the fact that there's monomers out there that are absolutely magnificent. So, you know, broaden your horizons. But I love this design so much. I'm a giraffe person. And so definitely, yeah, I love it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. So we're going to begin with an overlay of a sky blue acrylic. Just try to keep it very thin. The one kind of uh, trap, I guess you could say, that I sometimes myself fall into when I'm doing a very long nail is for some reason they just tend to end up a little bit thicker. And I know that that is, at least for me in part, especially when I'm doing it on top of a nail tip like this, the longer they are, the thicker they tend to be just so that the tip itself has some strength. So there's just a built-in thickness. But just, I think you end up getting it in your head that you need so much product because the nail's so long, at least for me. But just kind of have it in the back of your head to keep it thin. But then I'm going to be sculpting in some little white fluffy clouds with some white acrylic and then encapsulating this with clear acrylic. The best you can, again, try to keep it on the thin side. As you can see, mine's already starting to look kind of bulky. It takes a lot more filing that way. And I, for one, try to minimize my filing the best I can. But sometimes things just get away from me. So just encapsulate it to make sure those clouds stay protected. And then obviously we're going to be filing this nail into shape. I'm going to do it with my e-file. Love using my e-file, especially for this kind of a circumstance when I want things to go a little bit more smoothly and maybe a little bit faster. So now on my nail form backing, I'm going to be sculpting a base for my giraffe's head. And this is with kind of a creamy color. So this is the background of what your giraffe's pattern is. So the lighter color of your giraffe. So depending on what kind of color scheme you do, because you could do this kind of design with wacky colors like blue and green if you wanted to instead of a more classic giraffe color but for a classic giraffe color almost a white cream is what you want for the little base color and then sculpt two petal shapes for the base of the ears once they start to turn matte you're going to fold over the ear to kind of give it a little bit more three dimension and then just leave these to the side you're going to need them soon but just not quite yet so make sure that you know the wind doesn't take them or a cat doesn't steal but leave them leave them to the side for a moment and then after after you have this part done, you're going to glue your giraffe's head to the nail at a 45 degree angle. And my camera decided to skip out a part of this on me, which is very, very upsetting. I am so sorry, you guys. But glue the head at a 45 degree angle, and then you're going to bulk it all up and you're going to sculpt the base of her neck. And there's a lot more. You guys get to definitely see how this giraffe is created, even though that one section was missed. So when you're adding bulk to your giraffe head, kind of do it in small sections. As you can see, I'm just doing little bit by little bit, adding layer and detail, small baby steps at a time. And so as you're doing this, I'm kind of going around her face. Do not sculpt her lower lip or lower jaw. So I kind of have this upper lip that's just sort of hanging out in the middle of no man's land and that's okay leave it like that and then you're going to be gluing her ears on I'm going to snip off the pointiest little end of the ear so it sets a little closer to her head but glue those in place and then we're going to do the next one on the other side grab that little bit off then I'm going to snip it too just to make sure that it does sit well and then hopefully that didn't fly too far off and the ears don't have to be glued both in the same direction and you can move their a giraffe can move their ears on their own, each one separately, so they can go in slightly different directions and then secure them to her head with more of that kind of beige-ish, creamy, I don't know, you know, that light color acrylic. And just make sure that those are really fit in there and keep adding details. And while I'm adding details and you guys can watch the process unfold, I'm going to just talk about this monomer a little bit. I bought this late 2019. It was probably December type time in 2019 and I put it in my closet and I left it there because at the time I was getting some PR packaging from a competition that I was part of NTNA and I had an onslaught of monomer. I had monomer everywhere. I had like 
eight different brands of monomer to try. And I really didn't need to try the one I just bought. So I didn't do anything with it. And I just left it alone. Then all of a sudden, those other monomers that I, you know, had to try, I either couldn't stand a few of them and I safely disposed of them. And then the rest of them I used up. And I decided I should, you know, really get into the monomer that I purchased that I was excited by. And oh my goodness, you guys, this monomer would have made my experience in NTNA so much easier because the stuff is gold. It makes sculpting so easy. This whole giraffe thing, the part of the video that you guys didn't see bulking up the head was maybe two minutes in real time because it makes everything go so quickly. And you see how as I'm sculpting on her Aussie cones, I place the acrylic down and it does not move it stays exactly where i put it and then i can just guide it into place it is like i said it is a magical substance i am this is not sponsored i just i said i purchased this product this is something i bought with my own money no no gifts no affiliate codes nothing this is just purely me being infatuated with a product there is no ulterior motive here besides me wanting you guys to have the best nail experience out there and this 3d monomer is amazing and it's not necessarily cheap and i wouldn't necessarily use it for sculpting a nail because that's not what it's made for it is just made for doing 3d art but if you love 3d art if you're getting into 3d art if you want to have the best chance at success with 3d art give it a try and they have small bottles that you can test that aren't you know super expensive if you're like me, I wanted to try it. So I bought the biggest bottle that they sell because that's just kind of how I go with things, but do it however you want, but just give this product a try. I can't even, you know, say it enough. And if you have any of Koopa's triptych powders, it works beautifully with them. I have tried Koopa's triptych with other brands of monomer. Like I said, I've tried a bunch of monomers recently and I just was never um, overwhelmed by those particular powders. But with the 3D monomer, they work so much better. They're super creamy and they hold their shape. So, you know, that gives kind of a new opening to their powders as well. But really, that monomer is amazing. It works with any brand of acrylic powder that I've used. In fact, I don't even know if I'm using any Koopa in this particular design for color. Possibly that green. That green for the acacia leaf is probably a Koopa one. But anything else is just different brands. In fact, that background color, the creamy beige colors when I mixed. So... It works with it works with it. It's a beautiful, beautiful product. And that is the end of my unsolicited advice. And now we're going to continue with our draft tutorial. So I glued the stem of my acacia leaf to the bottom of her lip. And then I'm going to bulk it up a little bit with some more of my green. And then I'm going to glue each of those little leaves that I sculpted to the leaf as well. So as I'm placing down these little leaves, I'm going to try to space them so that they're a little bit um, staggered from side to side going across don't place any on the underside of her mouth towards her neck so you can stick one kind of coming out straight from her lips but don't put one that's going like deeper into where her mouth is going to be because that'll just sort of block you from being able to sculpt her lower lip and jaw later on as you can see i'm i am placing one of my little leaves coming straight out but just you know maybe don't stick one back into her throat and there's another one coming down the bottom and then after you have all those done just take a little bit more of your green acrylic and add a bit of it to the base of each leaf to really secure it to the stem so that it isn't going to um you know they're not going to fall off or they're still super delicate because they're extremely thin but you have a little bit more peace of mind if you add a little acrylic to the base of each one and now we're going to go back to our cream color acrylic and we're going to be adding her eyelids. The reason I didn't do that prior is because I wanted that black acrylic to have plenty of time to set up before adding a lighter color on top of it because black acrylic tends to bleed. And when that happens, it would have made my light cream color acrylic more of a dark muddy gray. And I don't want that. I want it to stay that nice bright cream color. So if you let your black acrylic set up for five to 10 or more minutes, then you have a little bit more assurance that it isn't going to bleed. It still might, you never know, depending on your brand of black acrylic, some of them just are going to bleed no matter what, but it does give you just a little bit less of a risk of that. And if you do find that your black acrylic does that really bad, the worst one for me is I have an orange that's just pesky that way. Actually, all my oranges, orange acrylic sometimes is a, probably the most difficult one to work with, but 
I tend to not sculpt things with orange acrylic and then I paint them. So instead of, if you have that case with your black, you could have sculpted her eye with the cream color or whatever color you wanted. And then later on when you're painting in details, paint in the area black and that would have been fine. So still using the cream color, we're going to be sculpting her lower jaw. So invert this nail so it's upside down and then work on the underside and pull that acrylic towards the leaves. So set it back away from the leaves and then pull it forward until it just gently overlaps the leaves in a nice rounded fashion, almost like you're pulling down a smile line. If you guys are familiar with sculpting a nail bed area and you put the acrylic kind of above where you want the smiling to be and then you gently kind of pull it towards the tip of the nail so it has that nice soft curve. Same concept with creating that lower lip area. And now with a warm golden brown, we're going to be adding a wash of color over our giraffe. So that first light color is really just like your highlight base color. So now from here on out, the colors that we're using are to bring out the more iconic giraffe color in her and I love a shimmery color for fur or hair if I'm sculpting a person too it's a great thing to use for fur or hair because that very subtle shimmer gives it almost a hair texture because hairs tend to be a little bit shiny and then if you have those little tiny bits of glitter or shimmer pigment in it it gives an individual hair texture to it without actually being there so using that little bit of glitter or shimmer color which may just in the beginning, if you're trying to sculpt something realistic, shimmer probably is not the way that you're going to think. It's just a nice little thing to do. And then with a darker, richer shade of brown, I'm going to be adding a little bit more color on the tip of her nose, the middle of her forehead, and then over her Aussie cones, going all the way down, not focused so much on the top of the Aussie cone, but more right around the middle of it. And then after you have that part done, and you're kind of working your way down, any place where you feel like there just needs to be a little bit more color, you can go ahead and add some more of that dark brown. And you can kind of build in and intensify some of your shapes this way. For instance, around the creases on her neck or around her eyelid, you can add some of that color. Base of her ears, any place you feel really needs to be a little bit more enhanced, you can do that. So now with either an almost black brown or black, you're going to want to go and add a little bit more of a, you know, rough texture to the top of her Aussie cones. So instead of trying to smooth it out flat, use the tip of your brush to almost muss the acrylic so that it has kind of a, almost a fluffy texture to it. And again, that 3D monomer will make that process infinitely easier and faster. And then wash some black acrylic on the inside of her ears. And when I say wash, it means it's very thin acrylic that's monomer heavy so that it almost is a paint consistency. And then after you have that done, you can kind of add some more color to the underside to her chin. I hadn't done that before. I hadn't, you know, inverted it that way to look at it, but you do need to do that. And then with a medium to a dark color brown, you're going to be adding her mane. And there's different types of giraffes. There's seven different kinds of giraffe species and that are actually giraffes eight if you count copies. but for just your regular like iconic classic giraffe there's seven different kinds and they have different kinds of spots and within that they have slightly different characteristics just in face shape so definitely look at some pictures of giraffes and find which kind you like and what kind of spots you like um you can kind of play around with it obviously you don't have to be that specific if you don't want to you know really go overboard with it you can just kind of let the giraffe print come to mind however you want. My personal favorite is a reticulated giraffe. I think that their spots are the most uh, classic and regal, you could say. So that's the kind I always lean towards when I'm doing something giraffe art based. Add some little spots going down on her face, very small as they kind of inch towards her mouth and then continue the spots on the other side. And when you're doing a design that has kind of a 360 view, make sure you look at it continuously from a multitude of angles. As you can see throughout the whole design process, I'm changing the way I'm holding it so that I can make sure that every section of it is properly painted and designed and has all the color that it needs. Add a little bit of black detailing around her eye. Not too much. You don't really want to overdo it. We're trying to keep this fairly realistic. So we don't want to do over, you know, too many outlines or anything of that nature. Just trying to keep it super simple. And like I said, as realistic as possible. So then after you have most of this painting done, you can add some highlights in her eyes. That's one of my favorite last details to add is highlights and eyes. It's kind of like my, Ooh, I'm getting close to done. This is looking really good. I'm happy. I get to add the highlights in the eyes, sort of a a moment. I also did a little bit of highlighting on her ears. And then to finish off this design for painting, I'm going to be doing a couple little highlights and details on the leaves of my giraffe's lunch. 
So she's got her lunch in her mouth and just do a little bit of highlighting and then a little bit of shading on the leaves. If you want, you can really go crazy with them and do veining if you want to take it a little bit further. But otherwise, just apply a layer of gel sealer over the background to make sure it is nice and shiny. I love a glossy gel background or a glossy background over 3D art. I think it makes the 3D art stand out even more. And then a very thin layer of matte top coat over your 3D giraffe, making sure that this isn't gel matte top coat. This is regular lacquer top coat that's going to kind of preserve the details of your 3D sculpting even more. So if you do have some crazy 3D stuff in there, don't stick gel top coat on it. But that's it. This is the whole design. I am so incredibly proud of this one. Please check out the Koopa um, monomer. I will put a link to it in the description box below. It is amazing stuff. And I'm sure you guys know that after listening to me rave about it. But really though, seriously, check it out. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.